Welcome back. Well, the Maple Leaf is flying high today. Success of the Vancouver Winter Games and Team Canada's record gold medal haul has transformed the nation's brand from bland to cool again. But will it last beyond the happy memories? Sally Hogshead is one of the world's leading brand consultants and the author of Fascinate, Your Seven Triggers to Persuasion and Captivation. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm curious, I mean, obviously we have a globe because we, uh, we not only staged a, a successful games, nothing went way off the rails, but we also had a record medal count. So that's fantastic. Were we on that track regardless of what happened in the medal count? Or is that sort of, the, is our brand really bolstered by the wins? Well, you can't deny the effect that those gold medals have on the overall Canadian brand. There was a really strong spirit though that was coming through in these games that I think the world has not seen before. There was a sense of, of pride, even a little bit of strutting going on, and a lot of great marketing iconography that came through beyond the gold medals. How do you turn that into profits though? Because the Olympic Games have been legendary for focusing on individual athletes that suddenly disappear from your consciousness only weeks later, and nobody makes any money from it. How do you profit from this? It's going to be important not only for the individual athletes to take their success and expand their own personal brands, but also for Canada to really come out center stage and use this opportunity for tourism and to be attracting new visitors, attracting new athletes, and using this to heighten their overall prestige within the globe and within the bigger conversation. What are the triggers you're talking about in your book? What are, what are some of the things you can do to fascinate and captivate? There are seven different triggers that we can all use. Power, prestige, lust, vice, alarm, mystique, and trust. Now, Canada traditionally has used trust, using function over form with a, a lining of fleece. But now we saw Canada coming out with a little bit of prestige, a little bit of power, and shaking its groove thing. So forget the trust and get me into the lust. How does that work? <laughs> How does Canada get lust as part of its portfolio? Canada did use lust with those red mittens, that icono the iconographic red mittens that now have sold four million. The fact that there was a visual example, it gives people a sense of something to feel close to, an icon that they can crave, that bright pop of color. It was unlike anything that any country has ever done before. It's interesting though, I mean, I don't know about I don't know about lust, but one thing we did going into these games was the whole own the podium, and it really threw people off. I mean, they, they're not right. used to getting that from Canada. They didn't seem to like getting, they, they liked the inflatable mooses, I bet, at the closing <laughs> ceremony much more than they liked the, the, uh, Canada actually standing up and saying, we're going to win. Uh, so yes. can you actually change your brand a little bit along the way? I think the Canada needed to change its brand in order to be, give itself a little bit more mojo, and I think it was a huge coup, the way the country came out and not only had a message through the performance of the Sports, but also told the world what was going to be coming next. They raised the bar in a yeah. really effective way. I think any corporate brand could be jealous. Every Olympic Games, particularly the winter ones, try and get iconic characters associated with them. And I'm just wondering what your take was on ours. We had, I can't even remember their names, Muffy and Choppy, the <laughs> Shashquatch. Did that work, or was that a, a failure, basically? You know, I would say that it's not that it's a failure. It's just that it got overshadowed by, by branding icons that were more important, like the athletes and the stories behind the athletes. You know, the, it's kind of artificial to put, a, to put a mascot on the Olympics when you have these incredible stories behind the training and, and the actual yeah. exhibition itself of the greatest sport in the globe. We're seeing some important stories beyond the Olympics in the corporate world right now that we got to hit, including, of course, Toyota, which has to be one of the all-time case studies in uh, your brand going Breakdown. off the rails. Uh, so what, what do they need to do to get back? What, what would your advice be to Toyota? Toyota's trigger that they used to fascinate consumers was trust. They were reliable and stable and safe, and consumers knew exactly what to be able to expect from them. And then all of a sudden, not only did we have a mechanical failure, but we also had a very significant breakdown in, in believing what the company was saying in terms of what they were disclosing. What Toyota needs to do is what Tylenol did. They, Tylenol immediately pulled everything off the shelf, but they also developed a, a new type of dialogue with consumers and they instituted that, that foil cap that we now take for granted on yeah. medications. That didn't exist before and Tylenol did that immediately as a badge to demonstrate how they were totally going to change the industry. Toyota has to do something to change the industry that nobody's ever done before in order to have a strong signal of change. The problem with this idea is trying to draw the analogy with Tylenol is you can't pull every car off the road. The market cap of that is billions of dollars. 
And there's a new twist to this story that's just emerged in the last couple of weeks, the idea of a ghost in the machine, software run wild inside right. your car. Especially with the Prius. That wants to kill you. I mean, isn't that really the problem you've got to focus on? That it's, it's not a killer. The, 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 really, though, it's the consumer trust that they need to win back. I think the mechanical failures are probably going to be easier for them to fix. The problem is going to be that consumers won't trust that they can buy these cars and feel safe with their families. And there's going to, I think we're going to continue to see a backlash as the class action lawsuits begin to spread. How easy it, is it for somebody to decide, a company, to decide up front what their brand is going to be? It's easy to say, you know, we've developed this reputation for and let's capitalize on it. But can you actually set out to say, we're going to establish this bond of trust and be a quality company? It, that's a great question, and you can't do it overnight. Unlike the other triggers, you can't develop trust instantly. It has to be earned through repetition. You have to demonstrate over time, and that's what makes it so valuable. But at the same time, it makes it very fragile because once trust is broken, it's difficult to earn back. Great to have you here. Thank you. The book is called Fascinate, Your Seven Triggers to Persuasion and Captivation. Sally Hall.